Welcome to part one of this ADF Insider session on deploying ADF security enabled applications. Oracle Fusion Middleware Consultant Dmitry Nefedkin will now explain this process to you. Hi, my name is Dmitry Nefedkin and I'm a part of Oracle ISV Immigration Center team. Today I'm going to show you how to deploy uh, ADF security enabled application to the standalone WebLogic domain. And uh, here's the agenda, the demonstration steps. First of all, we'll package our application to the ER file, uh, start our environment, WebLogic domain servers, and the Oracle Internet Directory. Next, we'll set up uh, Oracle Internet Directory Authenticator in our domain. Uh, plus, we set up the JDBC data source, and after that, deploy our application using the Oracle Fusion middleware control. Next, we map the OID groups to the application roles defined in our ADF application. Uh, test it and uh, see how things looks like. Next, we'll change the role permissions at runtime and uh, see the changes immediately. And at the end of presentation, I will show how to redeploy the application with a different security related settings and what will be the fact effect of that. my demo I'm going to use the application provided by Frank Nimpus in uh, his article named security for everyone that has been published in Oracle magazine January this year um, this is a rather sophisticated application that contains several task flows and uh, these task flows are exposed as a regions in the main home page and the application contains several application roles like employee, manager and HR manager and resource grants provided. For example, the task flow grants, employee can access the browse employee BTF and the salary over overview BTF is accessible only by HR manager and manager. And we also have the permissions, uh, custom permissions like panel tab protection and insert while new permission for more details, just check the Frank's article on that. And we also have the test uh, enterprise roles, which are mapped to the specific um, to the uh, specific application roles. And we also have specific uh, users, test users for our applications, so which are mapped to the um, enterprise roles. So what I'm going to do is uh, the following. First of all, let me quickly modify the deployment uh, profile of the application, specify the context root, name of the var file, and on the application level, I'm also going to do some modifications. Let me change the name of the ER file, name of the application as well. And uh, I also want to do the following. I don't want the JDBC descriptor to be generated for my application and inserted in the ER file. So I'm checking, unchecking this checkbox. I don't want to migrate the test users and groups and uh, that's that's pretty it let me check one more thing it's the application assembly yes it should contain only the uh, view controller so application deploy deploy to ER file and in several seconds I should uh, have my ER file ready for deployment. Okay, that's it. That's the ER file that we're going to deploy. Okay, that's my Linux box that we're going to use for the demo. So first of all, I will start the administration server of my weblogic domain. I have a specific script for that and uh, let me also start the manage server as well. 
it is named ADF server 1 and I have script named AD start ADF domain ADF server 1 dot shell okay since starting admin server is also started in running mode okay and the manage server has been started as well and I can open the browser and go to the fusion middleware control okay my host admin server port slash em entering the weblogic as a username and credentials of my weblogic user Here you see the Enterprise Manager Fusion Middleware Control main window and my domain named ADF underscore domain contains two servers, admin server and the managed server ADF server 1 and uh, we can look at the application deployments as well just the internal applications has been deployed uh, I don't have any custom applications right now let me also start the Oracle Internet Directory. I also have a script for that. It's named start oid.shell. Okay, it started. We can check the status and see the port for the LDAP and secure LDAP. Let me run the LDAP browser tool. I will use the J Explorer for that. Okay, we can connect to the OID. Have a safe template. We see the port, the host, the base DN, uh, the OCL admin as a admin user. Okay, and inside my OID. I have several users, Alexander Hunol, Bruce Ernst and so on, and uh, I've also created the groups, one is uh, for the administrator, uh, we won't use it in the demo, here's the developers, you see three members of the developers group, line manager, Alexander Hunol is a line manager, and the vice presidents, two users, Lex Dehan and Nina Kochers, are the vice presidents. Okay, now it's time to set up OID Authenticator, and we will use WebLogic Server Administration Console for that. Let's enter the credentials. Uh, go into the main structure to the security realms, my realm, providers. start the editing session press new button and pick the authentication provider that we need for this demo we'll use the Oracle Internet Directory Authenticator let's give it a name like OID Authenticator let's press OK and now we should uh, specify properties for our authenticator first of all the control flag should be sufficient next let's specify provider specific settings the host is correct one the port is 3060 principal is the C and RCL admin let's enter the credentials of uh, this admin user well, next, uh, the user base DN in our old app directory is CN user DC local domain and user filter. Let's change CN to UID and let's do the same for another one filter and the username attribute is UID as well. Okay, the group base DN is CN groups DC local domain in my case. And that's pretty it. We can save the changes 
and uh, one more thing to do is to reorder our providers we want OID authenticator to be the first authenticator in the list now it's time to activate the changes and as you see we should restart both the admin and the uh, managed server let's do it okay after service restart let's quickly check that we've specified our authentication provider correctly we can go to the security realms find our providers here's the OID authenticator now let's go to the user send groups and in the list of groups you see several groups like administrators, line managers, uh, vice presidents, developers, which are coming from the OID authenticator. That means that we've uh, specified the settings for the OID authenticator in a correct way. You see the same groups in the J Explorer, and we can look at the users as well. Here's Alexander Hunol, Bruce Ernst, and all the other users, like in the J Explorer or the browser and we can of course pick the Alexander Q note and look at the uh, groups that have been specified for him. Now let's configure the data source that will be used by our application. Go to the data sources, new generic data source. Let's give it a name and uh, the most important thing that the JNDI name should be the same uh, as we are using in the application module ADF business component of our application. So, it's the driver, specifying the database name, host, port, user, password, and so on. I will use the XE database with the standard HR schema inside. Quickly test the configuration that's successful and we should target the data source to the managed server to which we are going to deploy our application and let's activate changes okay now we're ready to deploy our application let's go to the fusion middleware control and pick the deploy option let's find the year file in the health system of our Linux box it's in the home Oracle labs deploy ADF security app ER that's the ER file that we've uh, uh, created in the J developer earlier so specifying the target the ADF server 1 our managed server and you see the name of application and the web module and in this step we can configure the security of our application let's specify that we're going to append application policies and we're ignoring uh, credentials in this case because we don't have any credentials inside our ER that we'll really need. Let's deploy the application, start the deployment process. It will take some time to deploy it. Okay. The application has been deployed successfully and let's try to reach it in the browser here you see it in the EM it's the URL of the application slash faces home GSF to reach the main page here it is and let's log in as an Alexander Hunold, who is a valid user of our OID build up directory, send to the login and the password, press OK. And what we see here, Alexander, he is a developer and he is a line manager, but he can access a lot of tabs of our application. Why? Because we haven't specified the mapping between the application roles 
and the enterprise group in the LDAP directory. And we will do it in the second part of the video. Thank you. That concludes part one of this session on deploying ADF security enabled applications. You can review part two of Dimitri's security session on the ADF Insider series here, where you'll also find the downloads for the application development runtime, JDeveloper, as well as tutorials, a discussion forum where you can ask questions related to ADF and JDeveloper. You'll find samples you can download and work with, as well as the ADF Developer's Guide.